Welcome back, everybody, to the Seattle Sonics, my NBA franchise here on NBA 2K22. Today we kick off year number three of the series. This team definitely has some expectations coming off a season in which we made the playoffs. And we're certainly looking to make some noise here in year three. And this team has a lot of big storylines that I would like to briefly go over. None bigger than year two in the career of Buzz Wigington, who won the Rookie of the Year award and looks to be our franchise player. We'll see what his progression looks like in the second year of his career. Hopefully, we found him a long-term co-star in the offseason with top draft pick Kyrell Story, who looks to develop into an elite player alongside Buzz. And I think something to look out for is really the amount of guard talent on this team. There's so much talent here at the guard spots that it's honestly crowded. And Seattle is a very good problem in that there might be too many guards and maybe a trade is inevitable very early into the season. So we'll have to see how this group of players gels and what to do from there. So for now, this will be the rotation. But as I said, expect a trade Pretty early in the season with one of those bench guards. Probably won't be Kevin Porter Jr. since we just signed him. So I guess it would be at least one of Jordan Poole, Davion Mitchell, or RJ Hampton. Those are really the three guys who have to watch themselves. I do think this team is better than last year's roster. And I'm expecting improvement from this team. However, the NBA power rankings clearly think otherwise. And I've got to say, after looking through these power rankings, they are bad. I mean, they are really bad. Let me show you them. So, I mean, at the top two spots, you have Golden State and OKC. Both finished under 500 last year. The Thunder aren't great. The Warriors had the second worst record in the league last year. I don't know how they're won. Yet, you have the defending champion Memphis Grizzlies at 10 when they only got better in the offseason. So, I don't know how it makes sense to put the second worst team in the league at 1 and the best team in the league at 10. It doesn't really get much better throughout. Cleveland was the one seed in the East last year. How are they 18? They have us at 21, which is just ridiculous. I think this is hopefully a French top 10 team here for the beginning of the season. We won 47 games last year. We obviously made the playoffs. We put up a fight against a tough New Orleans team in the first round. But don't worry, it gets even worse than that 21st ranking. And there are some other bad ones down the board. The Spurs were a playoff team last year. The Wizards were the two seed. How are they 29? Minnesota also a playoff team right at the bottom. 2K Sports here at the top is a little bit better. I mean, the Spurs probably shouldn't be at three. And then you have the defending champion Grizzlies way down the board. They have Memphis all the way down at like 23, which is lower than the Utah Jazz, who are the worst team in the NBA. How can you put the Jazz, who are awful, ahead of Cleveland and Memphis and Washington? I don't, I don't get it. You have the Pelicans super low, the Clippers super low. They have us at 29. Like, I mean, these are bad. Minnesota at 31. And then I noticed Eric here, he literally had the exact same power rankings as NBA.com. I think they just copy and pasted it. So again, really bad. So it looks like this team has some doubters to prove wrong early in the season. But I will say these individuals are not the brightest to just put it nicely. So our opening game is on the road against the Minnesota Timberwolves, who, as I said, made the playoffs last year. They're a good basketball team and they got better in the offseason with the big signing of Chris Middleton to a long-term four-year deal. I think they wanted to add another star on this team to continue to convince Carl Anthony Towns to want to stick around because he's on the final year of his deal. We've seen many disgruntled stars already get traded in this series, like Damian Lillard, Bradley Beal, and this past offseason, Donovan Mitchell. So Minnesota knows it could happen at the blink of an eye with Carl Anthony Towns if they want to field the best roster they can. So let's hop into this game. Sonics and Timberwolves opening night here in Season 3 as Cat wins the tip against new starting center Goga Bitudste, and we are underway. Seattle with the ball. Oscar J. Basilan trying to drive inside, guarded by Middleton, goes for the fadeaway, and the first points of the season is a fadeaway from Oscar J. Basilan. Minnesota trying to get their first of the year, but not on that play. Goga Bitudste blocks Cat. And then here's the rookie, Cairo Story, letting it fly from deep. Story's first NBA points come off a three-pointer, and the Sonics lead 5-0. Here's the rookie, Najungai Natumba, for three. Natumba was a late second-rounder, yet Minnesota is high enough on him to have him in the starting lineup. Russell nearly blocked by Buzz, no good. Rebounded by Reddish, who launches a beauty. 
down the floor for Buzz Wakington. That was a really smart play by Buzz. He had D'Angelo Russell locked up and then just stormed down the court for an easy layup. 11 to 9 now. Seattle's still up. Natumba over to Towns. Hands it off for cash money. Chris Middleton, the NBA champion a couple years back in Milwaukee with the short uh, mid-ranger. Tied at 11 now. Oscar J. Basilan misses the fadeaway, but Buzz Wigington is there at the putback. Good start for Buzz. He has four points, four rebounds, making some plays down low early. The subs are now in. This is the second rounder, Dichkenji Mukwamu, with his first NBA bucket on his first NBA possession. Good start to the young career of Dikenji Mukwamu, as here's Xavier Tillman, the former Sonic, in the corner for a wide open man. That's an easy three for Theo Maladon, and Minnesota leads for the first time today. Kevin Porter Jr., the Seattle native, with his first points as a Sonic, signed this offseason from the Rockets as it's now 19 to 20. Mukwamu over to the rookie, Chance Dumas, who gets the pump fake. Step back, splash! All the rookies are on the board now. Chance Dumas drafted from the Overtime Elite Academy with his first NBA points. 21-22, Jordan Poole finally checking into the game, and he immediately makes some noise. He does miss the shot, however. But Jakob Pertl is there for the rebound and the putback. Poole and Pertl, both starters last year, as Pertl blocks Xavier Tillman on the fast break. Poole connects with Chance Dumas, who misses the wide open three. Welcome to the Chance Dumas experience. There's going to be some missed shots aplenty. He is not an efficient shooter yet, but he's a damn good defender. Look out for him on that side of the floor. Jordan Poole hits the wide open three, coming off a Jakob Pertl block. 26-22, Anthony Edwards guarded by Poole, trying to make a play to the basket, and that he does! Edwards is one of three former number one picks in this game, along with Cat and Buzz Wigington. Winding moments of the quarter, Minnesota trying to get a last second bucket as Kendrick Nunn's layup is no good, and that'll do it for quarter number one. Very small sample size, but so far, so good. The Sonics look pretty solid, all of the rookies have some buckets already. Into the second quarter, a nice fadeaway there for Cash Money Chris, who's gotten off to a pretty good start in his Minnesota debut. Off the inbound, Oscar J. Basilin trying to drive to the basket. He fools D'Lo on the pump fake and gets the layup to go in. Good start offensively for Oscar, who is definitely looking to take a leap here in the second season of his career. Cat, guarded by Pirtle. Towns with the spin move. One of the most gifted big men scores in our league with a nice move. Here comes Kyrell Story, nearly posters Russell, and the dunk bounces in. Okay, well that's one way to get your first NBA dunk. It bounced off the rim and in. We saw Kyrell Story have a number of posterizing dunks in the Summer League, but that was unlike any of them. Towns with a nice contested layup. He is on fire right now. Early on it was Chris Middleton, now it's Carl Anthony Towns. Really scoring in bunches for Minnesota. Middleton answers right back. Kevin Porter Jr.'s reaction on defense there was a little bit late. As the Timberwolves now lead 32-34. Cat blocked! Great play by Buzz, and that one deflects off of Cat's foot. It looks like the high-level shot blocking ability is back for Buzz Wigington and really this whole team. They have been denying shots like it's nothing. Nice move there for Killa Cam Reddish. Reddish signed a lucrative extension in the offseason after a big postseason performance last year as he looks to be a big piece of his team's future. Tied at 36, Russell with a screen from Cat, and the pick and roll lurks perfectly. Carl Anthony Towns is on fire right now, Minnesota up by two. Russell gets it over in the corner, nice move there by Theo Maladon, the Frenchman, ha ha. With the layup, Minnesota on a nice little run. Seattle could really use a bucket right about now. As Oscar is blocked at the rim. Great play by Carl Anthony Towns. On the fast break, Russell in the corner. A great pass and a great shot by Chris Middleton, who has continued to have an unbelievable offensive performance. The Sonics need to get a bucket to get some momentum back, and that they do get, courteous of Kevin Porter Jr., 38-243 now. Buzz Wigington trying to make a move inside. Gets the reverse lay-in to fall. Nice layup there for Buzz. I feel like the Sonics aren't really using Buzz enough on offense. He's had a few nice buckets, but it doesn't really seem like he's the go-to guy today. And right as I say that, he makes an awesome drive to the basket for the layup, and Seattle's back within one possession. But not for long. May or maybe not. Or maybe so. 
Carl Anthony Towns gets the foot back after being blocked by Goga Bitadze as Chance Dumas with an awesome pump fake! What a slam! The rookie Chance Dumas with a great play faking out the former Sonic Xavier Tillman and showing off the athleticism. The first of many highlight plays in the young career of Chance Dumas as he kind of gets exposed on the next possession defensively by Kendrick Nunn who gets the shot to fall, 44-51. Under a minute to go here in the first half. Town to the fadeaway over to Kenji Mukwamu. Carl Anthony Towns is a force to be reckoned with right now. Seattle needs a buck to get back on track. Nice three from Jordan Poole, who has eight points in limited minutes. He has not been in the game much, but when he's been in, he's been good. Kyrell Story misses the layup. Great rebound by Pirtle over to Davion Mitchell, who does not get the three to fall at the end of the buzzer. So the Timberwolves lead by seven. Minnesota really dominated in that second quarter on both sides of the floor. Chris Middleton and Carl Anthony Towns have been causing Seattle's defense fits. And the offense has not been great. The three-point shooting has been very shaky so far. Seattle has really looked good down low, at least on offense. And that looks to continue here. Another offensive rebound for Buzz Wigington, who already has a couple putbacks today, adding another one there. 49-54, Anthony Edwards guarded by Buzz Wigington. Inside for Carl Anthony Towns. That's a mismatch. Cam Reddish is a good defender, but not when he's guarding 6'11", Carl Anthony Towns. 49-56. We'll see if Seattle can start to get back on track as Buzz Wigington with an awesome fadeaway. He is really starting to heat up now. 12 points, which leads the Sonics. He has been Seattle's best player today, I think, without question, which I guess isn't really a surprise. But Carl Anthony Towns has probably been the best player on the floor for both teams as he gets the slam there. 53-60. Buzz with a great pass for Oscar J. Basile and who kind of floats it up. And it does fall. Nice move there by Oscar. 55-62. Seattle is still down by a comfortable 5-7 to seven points really per possession. But Minnesota hasn't gone on a run here early in the third quarter as Buzz gets another put back off of a chiral story miss. Anthony Edwards blocked at the rim by Goga Bitadze. On the fast break, Oscar J. Basile and step back, splash! Seattle brings it within one possession. Now it's within two possessions. 64-60. to RJ Hampton, he misses for three, but Buzz gets another offensive rebound. Buzz Wigington continues to be a force down low. He has gotten offensive rebounds like it is nothing. Buzz then blocks Carl Anthony Towns. This kid cannot be stopped. He deserved to make the All-Star team last year and got snubbed. But I think this is the year Buzz Wigington will rightfully get in as the first All-Star in team history. Off the inbound, though, the Timberwolves would answer with a nice jump shot there from Theo Maladon, who's had a pretty nice game off the bench. And the Timberwolves are back up by eight. 62 to 70. RJ Hampton with a massive and one. It took a little while for Hampton to get on the board, but he finally does, and it's back to a five point game. Another inbound here for Minnesota, trying to get some guys off of screens, and it's Kendrick Nunn who will make the shot. 69 72 now as Maladon is blocked. The Fly Swatters of Seattle are back on the fast break. The rookie, Chance Dumas, for three. Dubas is not much of an outside shooter, so it is great to see that shot fall, and we are tied up. The Sonics with a big third quarter run. Minnesota trying to take the lead back, and when you got number 22 on your team who is a flamethrower, that can happen. After the Middleton three, the Timberwolves are back up. 76-77, final moments of the third quarter. Middleton to the basket with the slam. Three-point game. Seattle will get one more shot here in the quarter to tie it or bring you within one. As it's Davion Mitchell. Step back, heaves it up. No good. A pretty good third quarter, though, for the most part for the Seattle Sonics as they're only down by three. Now into the fourth, and look at Buzz Wigington. He was reading Carl Anthony Towns' eyes the whole time. Excellent basketball IQ from Wigington on that defensive possession, and excellent IQ on the offensive possession, recognizing the mismatch, making the shot. Buzz Wigington's fuel for the game today is really, really impressive. He's had a few very smart plays. 78-81, a huge three for D'Angelo Russell, despite having Goga Bitadze right in his face. The Sonics need a bucket, and that they don't get. Carl Anthony Towns blocks the shot on the fast break. Kendrick Nunn with it in the opposite corner. Carl Anthony Towns hits the three. The best offense is good defense. Cat gets the block on the other end, makes the three. 
Minnesota's right back up by nine points, and they're looking to do some more damage. Cat, again, another three. It is a 14-point game. The Timberwolves are on an unbelievable run, and they just cannot miss. 15 of the last 17 points have been scored by Minnesota, and the Sonics are now all of a sudden down by 15. Nice little move here by Kyrill Story, his first points of the second half. And it's been a rough debut for Kyrill Story, I will say. I've been impressed with his defense, though. But offensively, there have been some growing pains. Another three for D'Angelo Russell, who has really picked up his play here in the second half. And Minnesota just continuing to build up this lead. Russell connects with Najonga and Natumba. You cannot foul the jump shooter. Kyrill Story's rough debut continues. Natumba would go 3-for-3 three three from the line. It's a 20-point game. Oscar misses the open three. Another putback for Buzz Wigington. And it's a common theme here. The Sonics are not hitting their long-distance shots. The three-point shooting has been very poor, and they've needed Buzz Wigington to bail them out more times than they should. Oscar does hit that open three, thankfully. He does not hit that one, but another offensive rebound for Buzz Wigington. It was 14 total boards on the day. Kyrill Story back to Buzz and one. This kid is a magician. Although it's been a rough game for the rest of the team, Buzz Wigington has played remarkably. Chris Middleton gets way too much space for three. Poor defense there by Cam Reddish, and that sort of feels like the nail in the coffin. The Sonics have been kind of making some ground the past couple minutes, but that play is really a killer. Buzz to Oscar. He does make the three, so Seattle's not going to quit, even though they're down by 12 with about 100 seconds left. They kind of need something quick here. Kyrill Story going to the basket. Nice move. Story up to nine points on the game. Seattle brings it within 10. 95 to 105, the fast break opportunity. Here's Cam Reddish for three. Reddish up to nine points, and Seattle cuts it down to seven. And now it's time to start playing the foul game. That's pretty much how the rest of this one would go along. Minnesota did not get any funnel, funny business in the final few seconds of the game. And they win this one here on opening night. 111 to 101 is your final. There was a lot of good in this game from the Seattle Sonics, and there was a lot of bad. And it's not time to overreact through one game, but there is a lot to talk about. So, Buzz Wigington was an animal. 23, 14, 6 blocks, 6 offensive rebounds. He was great today, and I wish we used him as more of a focal point of the offense because we really tried the three ball too much, and, well, it didn't work considering as a team we went 9 for 31. Oscar Javis Seelan was fine, 19 points, albeit on inefficient shooting, but the rest of the team was very unimpressive. I guess Jordan Poole was pretty good. I don't know why he only played seven minutes. That number needs to go up. But Kyrell Story had an underwhelming debut, 4 for 14 from the field, 1 of 7 from 3. Chance Dumas was good on both sides of the floor, 9 points in just 8 minutes. Even though he's not much of a scorer, that was great to see. But a lot of the guards off the bench, Porter, Hampton, Mitchell, who are all playing for new opportunities, all were unimpressive in this game. We could not stop three of Minnesota's four stars. Cat, Towns, and Russell were great. We did limit Anthony Edwards to just eight points on three of 11 shooting. But Cat, Middleton, and D'Lo were just too much. So since it is opening day, this will be the only game of the episode. But obviously, we're going to go along faster as the year goes on. I definitely want to play that Pelicans game, get a rematch of the first round of the playoffs. And then what other game on the stack would you guys like to see? Maybe you see a team who's changed a lot, like Indiana or Utah or Portland. Maybe we face off against the defending champion Memphis Grizzlies. Let me know what game you would like to see in the comments below. Make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.